Hi, this is Willie with Willie's Life. Uh, I wanted to do a quick near-death experience video uh, without the, all the crazy emotion that I was going through the last video. Um, and uh, kind of explain some a little bit of details that I didn't get to explain, um, but kind of make the video a little bit shorter than what it was. So um, my mom had died uh one morning and i was heading back <clears throat> i was delivering uh packages and mail and i was coming back through uh from salt lake to wyoming and um uh, i uh i saw a flash of light <clears throat> and i looked over on the second flash and uh uh i saw her and so i got i got nervous and i i called my family tried to get a hold and and i strangely i couldn't call through that night um, even though, <clears throat> um, before I could. And so, uh, I got home a couple hours later and, um, walked in and checked on my mom and, uh, uh, she appeared to be okay, but she had actually passed away like 15 to 30 minutes before I'd gotten there. And I didn't realize that, but I had scared her the night before. And I didn't want to scare her again, you know, I scared the crap out of her because I walked up and was like really close and she's like, <gasps> and, you know, and uh, gasped and everything. And I was like, oh, I'm sorry, you know, and she's like, oh, my, you know, my God, you're going to give me a heart attack. And then the ne that next day she died of a heart attack and I didn't want to cause her heart attack. But um, and I was. Uh, so I, I had uh, some mixed anger and um sadness about myself and, and about the whole thing that had happened but as i walked up and checked on her and i looked at her legs i was like okay i don't want to scare her again i felt i had something like walk through me almost like uh, uh her spirit or something or you know maybe it was god i don't know but i had this overwhelming feeling that everything was going to be okay and that i should just go to bed and so um that's what i did uh, about three hours later um i heard screaming um, my sister and, um, my sister and my dad were freaking out and, uh, my sister's like, oh my God, you know, um, uh, dad, uh, mom's dead, you know, and, uh, the kids are sitting on her lap. I run up there and I, and I saw her and it was obvious she'd been dead for a while and, uh, she had lost color and, um, uh, it hit me super hard, man. Like I just, it was like, it, I almost hit the ground. I mean, I, it was like that rush of, um, seeing her in the, in the van and see, and then having this overwhelming feeling when I got home, like everything was okay. I mean, it was, and then seeing her, her, um, dead on the couch, uh, the, the recliner, um, and then looking at her and realizing that what animated her, her spirit or soul or ghost was no longer there. You know, that, that made me realize that, um, that we, we go somewhere and, and it was, a, that was the most profound, horrible thing that I ever gone through was looking at my mom dead. And, uh, that's what did it for me. What made me realize without a doubt that we didn't die. But then I had, you know, and I, and I started recording, trying to do ghost hunting and everything. I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to try to capture something, you know, and I didn't do that right away. Actually, I think it took me about two weeks, um, three weeks, something like that. Uh, because I, I heard my mom say, Hey, Willie, you know, one, one day or, or call my name. And I'm like, I was like, man, I'm freaking losing my mind. You know, I keep hearing my mom talking, like I could hear her voice, you know, like throughout the day. And so uh, I grabbed a recorder because she said, this was like right before she died, we were talking about ghosts and how people come back and see people, you know, um, they try to communicate through, the, you know, by whichever means they can. And so uh, I was like, well, maybe, maybe this is something that is going on. So I took a recorder up and uh, I had a video recorder, nothing ever showed up on the video recorder, but. Um, I put two audio tapes across the room from each other and played them, you know, one, uh, one was a digital, one was a tape, um, uh, at first, you know, and then I ended up with two digitals and, uh, two, 
tapes, you know, and put them uh, four places around the room, hoping to catch something. Because I'm kind of strange that way. I like to I like to uh, change things up and, and look for uh, changes or, or something that I'm missing. So, but I went to sleep one one night and um, it was super quiet in there. And I heard my mom plain as day say, "Hey, Willie." again just like i'd heard her before and boom i opened my eyes up flipped out of bed really quick shut the recorder off put my earphones in re rewound it a little bit and played it again and sure enough she said hey willie i heard her and i went around showing people i was like hey man hey check this out i just want you to hear this and my aunt's like what did patty say and uh that was my aunt and i go i go and she'd been passed away for a couple of weeks two or three weeks something like that maybe four and uh, I had, I brought that to her and I said, you know, and I let her listen to it. And she goes, what'd Patty say? And I go, this was a recording from last night. And she, she got, she went white, man, like just pale white. And she got dizzy and she's like, her eyes got all huge. And she was just like, you know, it scared the crap out of her. And, and see, I, I, uh, I thought that was the most amazing thing in the world. You know, like if someone else can hear it, because my wife could hear it mother-in-law could hear it and my brother-in-laws could hear it my sister could hear it and then now my aunt and my aunt didn't know that it was a recording from the night before you know so um and everybody was like yeah that's that's your mom that i can hear it you know and uh which i put that recording on my podcast uh uh which is through google now um you know, which is under spiritual events. Um, I have a couple of near death or uh, EVPs on there, which is electronic voice phenomena. But uh, anyway, um, I was upset and I started getting because I, I got a little bit weird. I'm like, okay, so where the hell is God at? Is there a God? You know, I know we have an existence, but is there really a God? And I hope there is a God. I hope it's just not some crazy, you know, you know, nightmare on the other side, you know, so I, I was letting my mind play tricks on me. And so, um, well, my mom had come through a bunch of different times and was like, um, I love you guys. Everything's okay. She said that kind of stuff all the time. And so I was really, I was happy, but I was, I still wanted more. And, um, so I ended up, uh, uh, I was, wasn't sleeping. I was still going through a lot of stuff. My family was, and, um, I ended up getting hurt at work, which is where my near death experience came in. And, uh, um, I, I, there was a bunch of steel banding and I picked up on it. Essentially, I won't go through all the details. Um, anyway, it smacked me, it like broke loose and hit me in the gut. And it picked me up off my feet and smashed me into a shelf. And then I got stuffed into a, like a little box, you know, with the steel and almost crushed, you know, almost if there wouldn't have been a square tubing in there, it would have cut me in half. I'd have died um, with all the, the speed and everything. Well, I went into, it went into slow motion. Um, and I was praying to God. I'm like, I'm like, uh, Oh God, don't let me die like this, you know? And that was as it was crushing me going back toward my spine. And, uh, so anyway, uh, leading up to that, I was kind of pissed off at God and I was like, you know, maybe there isn't a God. Maybe I'm just being stupid. Why am I praying every day? And, and my prayers were always the same. I was always like, I'm like, if you're really there, please just, all I want to do is look in and on the other side, I want to know that there's something else out there, please God. And I'd pray like that three to five to 10, 15 times a day. I'm not even really sure now because it's been so long, but, um, I prayed constantly about it. And, um, the last day I was so upset. I hadn't slept in like, I think it was two days and I hadn't eaten breakfast and I was working a Saturday and, um, it was a beautiful, a beautiful summer day. Um, but anyway, I was, uh, I got hit, boom. And it, 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 it was like, as it was crushing me, I was like, ah, like I screamed out cause it knocked all the air out of me. Well, my friend Dan that I, that I worked with out there, he was outside of the shop, like across the yard, and he heard me scream. And then uh, the steel um, 
the band, the chain busted off, boom, and the, and the steel went everywhere after it crushed me. But I wasn't there to see that part of it because I was, I had traveled out of my body. And so um, I traveled into this light. As I was coming up, I don't remember everything else around it. I remember this little tiny door, like maybe 80, 100 yards away. And there was a figure standing in there. And I'm moving toward him, you know, like the, the door's coming at me or I'm moving toward it. You know, I'm not really sure um, when I think back on it, but I was coming up on it. I'll just go with that. And there was a man with a long hair, long beard, and he was muscular built. Um, he looked like maybe some kind of a Viking warrior is what he looked like to me. Um, and uh, he had white uh, clothes, like, like, uh, not really going to say Greek looking, but you know, uh, what people, what I've seen people describe as either Greek or, or, uh, uh, what Jesus wore, you know, in paintings and stuff like that. Um, but, and I'm not, I'm not a Christian. I'm a spiritualist. I don't, I don't even know if Jesus is real. I, I don't have a clue. You know, I know there's a God and I know I'm not saying God is a man. Um, what I'm saying is he put it put himself as a he or a man in front of me and uh to say you know everything's going to be okay like as i was traveling up i could hear this beautiful sound you know it was like it was going into me it was like you know hitting me all over and uh it was like it was pulling me toward it and it was the most beautiful vibration beautiful sound that I've ever felt, yeah, ever heard, you know, both. And uh, I had no pressure on me. There was no, it was almost like I was in water, but without that weird pressure on your head. You know what I mean? Like, uh, like, like I'm floating above the, above, above the pool floor. Um, but I'm coming up and I see there's a, a bunch of, there's, um, I don't even remember how many people there were around him. Like they were angels though. And I, I couldn't tell what they were at first until they got up close. Then I realized they had wings on them and they were all leaning forward like this and they didn't look at me. They were just leaning forward, praying toward him, you know, uh, in a circle around him. And I was looking at him this way and, uh, he put his hand out for me and, uh, I said, Whoa, whoa, whoa please don't take me. I, I don't, I can't go. I got to take care of my family. And, he smiled at me and leaned his head, you know, and nodded at me. And he says, okay, so-and-so, but he called me by another name. That was my real name, my first name, um, before I, before I came to earth. I know it sounds weird. Um, I don't remember what was on the other side before I got here. I don't remember that. And I, um, and he said, I will see you in quite a while, Willie after that and I, when he said he called me by that name it was like nine or ten sim, sim, syllables symbols whatever uh cross there they were they almost looked like x's and t's or something like that weird numbers um but they were not of and i've gone through so many different scripts to see if i could find that writing style and i've never seen it ever and uh he just came up in front of me and I, uh, it was like a computer screen when he said it. And then he said, I will see you in quite a while, Willie. And, um, and then right before I went back to my body, I saw, which was one of the things I always thought about was why are we different colors? Why is there white, black, Mexican, you know, skin colors? Um, you know, why, why is there so many different skin colors? Because I, one of my biggest problems was, is, was is uh why does why did god make us different colors people hate each other over stupid over stupid things like that you know like oh you know they're not white you know or they're not black you know and so everybody has this issue with each other over something really stupid you know uh and i, I mean i know what the scientific version of how we were white and black and and different skin colors I, i've heard all of that but you know I always wondered if, if that was not really the case and God did it, what, what was God's purpose, you know? And that was kind of in my mind. 
And right before I went down, he his skin color changed. And his skin color was like a porcelain white, like you see a doll. Uh, when I was coming up on him, he looked like almost like an image of like what they show Santa Claus to be like, you know. And so, uh, uh, he, uh, he changed from pale white down in, and then he started being, um, changing it to skin color, like Caucasians. And then he went from di the different skin color scale of the lightest white person I've ever seen to the darkest black person I've ever seen. And then going through all those people back and forth. Now I'm changing the skin color. And, uh, he did it like five or six times really quick. Like it was flashing, a, you know, like a camera. Blah, 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 blah. And the skin was changing. Um, and his, uh, his eyes during this whole time stayed the same. Um, and they were of time. His eyes were of time. They, they had, they were, they, they literally were like brown and green and blue and he had a sliver of red and I believe it was his red eye or his right eye that had the red sliver in it. Um, I know a lot of people are going to be like, oh man, that's the devil, you know, I guarantee you it wasn't the devil. If I don't even believe in the devil, technically, you know, I don't believe in Christianity, but I believe, I don't think he had an evilness to him at all. I'm not saying that that, but after he changed from white to black over and over, he became like gold, you know, like, like a gold ring, but gold skin. And, uh, he, uh, his skin like melted away, like into nothing and the light, you know, shone through. Um, and, uh, it was a white, like a super, um, uh, soft bright white light it didn't hurt my eyes or anything like that um but the crazy thing about um this is i kind of i kind of felt like he what he was saying was we're all the reason that we're all different colors is because he is all different colors you know he's uh when i say he i don't mean he necessarily or she he it is energy um, God is an energy. It's, it's a being that changes to see, to let you see whatever you have to see, um, to get you to feel relaxed enough to come over. You know, uh, if you want to, if you accept, you know, the gesture of come with me, you know, come to the other side. And, uh, it's, it was an amazing, it, it changed my, it changed my outlook on life. Um, I don't want to die or anything like that. I'm not saying that, um, but I'm not, I'm not afraid and I don't want to look at anybody like I've, I've had so many friends and family die in the last decade. It's not even funny. Um, some suicides and, um, cancer and heart attacks and, you know, it, it's old age you know, there, there's a whole number of reasons they've died and it, uh, and it's affected me, you know, but I look at them and I'm like, you know, cause I had a really good friend of mine just pass away in November, 2020. And we've been talking every weekend we talk about God and spiritual stuff. Um, you know, uh, for like probably 10, 15 years of my life. And so we were really, really close. And uh, when he died, and he was in really bad shape, bad health, I uh, I cried up to before he died. But when he died, I wasn't, I didn't cry after that for like weeks. I mean, it, it just, uh, and I went, as soon as I watched him take his last breath in the house, um, he was surrounded by family and everything. I walked back out. I sat in my car and turned on my recorder, my video recorder, hoping to catch him saying goodbye or something. And I heard something odd go, uh, well, you know, in the middle of like some just weird, like, you know, just like that, an odd sound. 
and um but nothing else no i haven't i haven't seen his ghost i had an awesome dream of him and my buddy had another dream that the the same night that he did or that i did he did and we dreamed of him walking up to us on a couch um it was an old style living room we we're sitting on a couch and his family members were there and he walked up and he put his hand out and he shook our hand and um he uh called me by my old nickname willie walking weeds um and uh i forgot about that it had been so long since he had said that to me and you know bob was 73 and um he hadn't said it to me since maybe he was 60 or 50s or something like that and uh but anyway i'm just trying to throw that in there um it the whole thing changed my mind my life my mind about like i i know we don't die i know there's a god i don't know what goes on over there i don't i don't know details of anything i don't think anybody knows details people say they do but i really don't think they do uh i don't know what the purpose is of this life necessarily i know that I try to be the best human that I can possibly be. And that's really, that's made me become who I am today is because suffering is suffering and you should try to help people and animals and, and help the suffering. That's, that's a huge thing. But I also think, you know, you should live your life and be happy and have fun. Um, I don't believe I don't believe in a lot of things that people believe in. So, but those are the two things that I do believe in. Um, and, uh, kind of a motto that I go by, if you can call it, that is, um, you know, I've stole this saying and kind of morphed it into my own, but, um, basically be the light in someone's darkness. That is something that is extremely important. And I don't mean just at somebody like a person, I mean, an animal, um, I, I rescue cats and dogs and, um, I'm there for them all the time, you know, and it's, and it, it was, it's been difficult, you know, I've lost, I've, I bought, I, um, I buy tons of medicine for them and everything. And, and it's just, it's not easy watching them die. You know, it's, it's a very, uh, difficult thing. So anyway, I'm getting off on a tangent. So, uh, anyway, I'll probably cut all that out.